Welcome back, fellow citizens of Jared Darren, the Super President. This is the show in which we try to build our own country, take over the entire universe, and fix all of the universe's problems. You know, a wise person once said, Can I get a large coffee, two creams, and three sugars? I'm not necessarily calling anyone out in particular, I just think statistically, it's likely. That's the thing about wise people, they come from every place, every shape, every size, everywhere you could possibly be. There are wise people around you, learning to do basically anything they feel like. They don't need to do anything for you, they can be wise against you, who even knows? But I clearly don't. <laughs> I'm talking today about the education of the people around us that lead us. I mentioned Arnold Merkel has a degree in quantum chemistry, which everybody went, wow, that is very smart. It is. <laughs> and what happens to people when they go to school to become the leader of a country? The answer is most probably don't. I mean, realistically, you're in kindergarten. Only really one person can have that job at a time. You can't assume that the job is yours. However, if you look at certain world leaders, now there are certain people out there, like Mr. Putin, who studied law before joining the KGB in 1975. And on the flip side, you got people like Justin Trudeau from Canada, who studied English literature and education from two different universities in Canada. He's got two bachelors. I know it's going to come up eventually, so let's get it out of the way. Donald Trump has a Bachelor of Science degree in economics. Words can be said in either direction here. We'll just move on. <laughs> there are a few people, however, that have kind of an interesting education, kind of like Emmanuel Macron from France, studied philosophy and attained master's degree in public affairs, which I guess if you're going to lead somebody being public about it and a, a, a feral official, Going back to Canada for a second, have you ever thought Trudeau is, like, well-spoken? I mean, his entire education and work experience is about making sure he knows how to teach to children, which realistically, you could joke about, but on the flip side, it means you do have a lot of practice communicating in a way that no one gets left out. Just something to think about. He's good at what he does. It was just talking a lot in front of podiums and things. We all know how I feel about podiums. You have Xi Jinping from Beijing, who studied chemical engineering. So, another STEM field out there for you. On the flip side, you have Stefan... Oh, no, I'm not gonna say this right. Lofen from Sweden, who uh, basically completed military service, became a welder, and then a union rep. And then he became a chairman of the union, representing like a third of a million people. That's what I've noticed. You can become a leader pretty much anywhere with pretty much any education and background. Although some do become slightly more common. So we take a look a little bit more at the old numbers. Fine. Politics and economics, and then law, and then military and law enforcement are the top three. Kind of sad that military and law enforcement has to be up there. Then you got arts and humanities engineering and architecture, and you got business and finance. Math and science is pretty low down. That explains a lot of why countries don't tend to listen to math or science. And then education's below that, which goes to show you some of the some of the priorities in the world. Then public policy and administration with seven, then medicine, then social sciences. Is it any real surprise that politics is complicated when the people who are at the top of politics study politics, economics, and law, and the people who are based around communication, such as math, science, education, and social sciences, are not very well represented? I mean, you could argue that they bring other things to the table, you could argue. <laughs> I don't know. I thought all of this was interesting. My own education for those curious is I did business administration, and then I took a detour, and then I tried to do a little bit of accounting, and I hated that, and then I took another detour, and I tried to do a bit of computer science, and I hated that, and so I took a little bit of a detour back to business, and then I discovered that cameras were my real joy. And this is how the real world works. <laughs> for those wondering about the straightforward nature of this episode, I mainly needed a filler episode, a sort of visual look over there, while I figured out all of the 1,000 sub videos because I keep forgetting what I promised and I'm trying to make sure all of them do out well. <laughs> I'm working on it. I feel like I did a pretty good job. <laughs> this has been your super presidential. Look over there. Candidate Darren signing off for Saturday saying welcome to JAR. JAR takes all kinds. You are family now. Please join us this week and every week. We go up every single Saturday, Monday, and we're live streaming on Wednesday reacting to old videos. Please help me. <laughs> it's gonna be so cringy. Don't forget to check down below in that description for links to fun things, and I will leave you, as always, in that viewer submitted conlang for JAR, the viewer submitted motto for JAR, which is Mam Dana Pamen Lem. Mi u Dana Pamen e ita mi u Mam li ita. 
See you on Monday. This episode has been brought to you by Luke and Rachel. Two people that if they were to lead a country, it wouldn't matter where they came from. Only that they gave us free ice cream in the cafeteria on Tuesdays. Thanks. <laughs>